morning, everybody. It's Christina, and I am so excited because I am here with Gita Bass. She is a celebrity makeup artist and a brow and lash ambassador for Tweezer Man. How are you? Hi, Welcome. I'm so great. How are you? I'm so good. Well, I'm so excited because you're going to be doing my makeup today. I I'm so lucky. Wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, so what are you going to be doing today? So today we're going to be doing a really gorgeous fresh fall look. Mm -hmm. Like this is a look you could go apple picking, you could go for coffee, you could even go for drinks. But then we're going to bump it up a little bit with some lashes. Ooh, so it's I kind like of that. like a day to night look. I mean that might be your daytime sure. look, who knows. Yeah. But I feel like in the fall, you know, things start to get a little grayer and darker and I love to have a bright lip. Totally. To sort of brighten up our worlds a little I love bit. That. Yeah. That's great. So Gita's gonna be here doing my makeup. And of course we want to hear from you guys. She knows everything, yes. so she can answer anything. So <laughs> please send us your questions and your comments. So yes. we already prepped the face, right? Yes, we yeah. prepped the skin. Mm -hmm. um, Christina has gorgeous, glowing oh, kind of you. olive skin. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna start with the brow. Okay. Because I feel like with a look like this, a bold brow is so important. Mm -hmm. And once you have the brow and the shape, that and that sort of governs the rest of the makeup. So firstly, her brows look pretty good. Thank you. Um, but I'm gonna just brush them a little bit and okay. I'm using the Tweezer Man Slant Tweezer. Mm -hmm. This is my all time favorite tweezer. I've been using this ever since I started. Sure. And it really makes tweezing the brows so much easier, mm -hmm. more accessible. So basically you wanna brush them up. I don't really see that many. I see a couple of tiny ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna grab there we go, a couple of these little bottom ones. And the best way to do it is to really hold the tweezer about halfway down. Mm -hmm. And then you want to get to the root of the brow and then pull in the direction of the brow. Oh. And you don't seem, you weren't flinching. No, so it makes hopefully, it so it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I mean, there are a couple of tricks. If it does hurt, try having a shower first because that really opens up the follicles oh. and that makes the hair slide out more okay. easily. Nice. And also, sometimes I'll just press, you know, mm -hmm. after I do a hair, I press down and that helps. That helps, But yeah. it's usually, and this brow looks pretty good, it's usually um, easier to do, do them to yourself. Right. It doesn't hurt as much. No. I think it's also because you're ready for it. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I will say as well, you know, if, if, your brow, if you're suffering from like really kind of sparse, overly tweezed brows, leave them alone. Let them mm -hmm. grow out if you can for about six to eight weeks. Okay. And then, you know, maybe go see a professional just to get the shape and then you can keep it up at home. Sure. But, you know, sometimes you do have to grow them out. But you have obviously, you know, really taken good care of your brows and Thank they look you. perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Thank not you. Not much to tweeze at all. Thank so. you. There you go. So now <laughs> I'm going to take a brow pencil. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take, let's see, looks like, I don't like to go too dark. Sure. You know, but I like to sort of, you know, you have some blonde highlights in your hair, so mm -hmm. I don't want to go too dark. I'm going to use this, it's the Dior, it's the Universal Brown. It's a nice one. Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice one. Yeah. And, you know, I like how full your brows are in mm -hmm. the center, so I'm not going to do too much there. I, okay. You know, the, I see that a lot when people really fill in in the center, and it can make, it can look very severe, and it can also sort of make your eyes look closer together. Okay. So, you know, I, I'll do a few short strokes, and you really want to, you know, don't press down too hard. Right, you're like barely pressing at all. I'm barely pressing, yeah. just to f fill in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not a fan of that overly square sort of inside brow. Yeah. And then as you get towards the outer tip, you can even use a darker, slightly darker pencil mm -hmm. if you want. I don't think we need to in this case, but I am pressing a little bit harder, harder. Mm -hmm. just to f just to fill in and just to really mimic the brow hairs. Okay. And for a look like this, the brow is super important because mm -hmm. we're not going to do a lot of eye. We will do lashes, but the brow is kind of the the hero the along focus, with the lip, yeah. mm -hmm. and it will you know a lip and a brow really balance out yeah. each other. So so when you're choosing an eyebrow pencil color, should you go a little lighter? So usually, if you're a blonde, I mm -hmm. like to go a shade darker. Okay. Um, and then if you're a brunette, I often go a shade lighter. But that's also you know it's that's personal preference. Some people love a really dark brow, and that's their look. Mm -hmm. So you know I sort of talk about these rules but then I also say break them if you want you right. know what I mean like if that's not your look then don't worry about it you know yeah. if you love if you're a platinum blonde and you love a really dark brow go for it mm -hmm. you know but it will look obviously a little more harsh and yeah. a little stronger but you know for you you have such an earthy natural look you know with your sort of high you know mm -hmm. golden hair and golden skin that I feel like 
I want to keep the brow a sure. little more natural, but but still really defined. Yeah. Um, and they're they're very dense. Your brows, Thank which you. is great. Thanks. You no, know, you've obviously. I don't know if you tweezed a lot when you were younger, or if you just didn't. If your mother. No, just did waxing. Did. Well, the, Cynthia says, do you suggest waxing or threading? Um, I mean, look, it, that's all a personal preference mm -hmm. as well. Some people find um, waxing and you know threading easier and less painful. Some people find it more painful. Mm -hmm. I think if you get, I think you can get them done, and then I think you can sort of save yourself some trips to the salon. Like if you have some really good tools, yeah, the tweezer man tweezers are amazing. So once you do, if you if you've been threading all your life, right. right but then you can, it's really easy to maintain the shape. Sure. You know, if you can tweeze, even if you tweeze a little bit every day if you need to, mm -hmm. then you don't have to go to the salon all the time. Right. Because you know, I'll often see friends of mine that have these really sort of out of control brows, and they're like, oh, I just can't get to the salon, I don't have time. And, you know, and I say, well, you have tweezers, sure. don't you? You just, you can see, you know, grab them. Right. So, yeah, so it's really, you know, personal preference, but you can, Maintain them at home, mm -hmm. even if it's just in, but even if it's just touch-ups. Oh, between. definitely. All right, these look really good. I didn't. I, I feel like I had um, a helping hand here. I didn't <laughs> really have to do much at all. What kind of brow trends are you going to see for this fall? So I think bra the brows are in, and they they always have been. And I think mm -hmm. um, even though you know what I love is this '90s makeup is kind of back, but they mm -hmm. didn't. The '90s thin brow is not back. I don't yeah. know that we'll ever go back to I that. Don't I so. don't think so. Thank goodness. <laughs> I <hope not. laughs> but you know, I think with brow trends, I think you really have to um, look at your own face. For mm -hmm. example, like I love Cara Delevingne's brows. You know, yeah. but I have to admire them from afar mm -hmm. because I have such a narrow face that if I had a narrow jaw, if I have these big eyebrows, it throws my whole face out of balance, sure. you know what I mean? And then you see these really arched brows, which are amazing, but if you have a really square face, for example, it just looks too harsh, you mm -hmm. need a rounder. So I, I you know, hesitate when I talk about brow trends because I think you have to sort of interpret your, you have to interpret the trend to suit your brow. Sure. So I think to just like thick, um, you know, groomed but not overly groomed, mm -hmm. not square. No Insta brows, <laughs> no. you know what I mean? And just yeah. like, I think that's, you know, not overly done. I think that's the right. key. So just keeping them almost a little boyish, um, but then groomed. Like mm -hmm. Just like this, I mean, you are on, your brows are on trend. Yay. They're perfect. <laughs> Thank you. And I love this. I think this is, you know, as much as we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, but then an essential trick as well is Brow mousse. So okay. I, for me, if if I see an un, you know, ungroomed brow, you know, a brow that's brushed down, it kind of makes me twitch. Cringe, I can't yeah. stand it. It's like one of my pet peeves. Yep. And when I send actresses down the red carpet, I'm not there to help them. So if they, you know, if they put on a jacket or if they hug someone, mm -hmm. you know, I don't. I'm not on the red carpet to help. Sure. So this, the Tweezer Man brow mousse is kind of like my assistant. Okay. Works as my assistant on the red carpet because if I put this in, I know that the brows will stay in place sure. and then I don't have to obsess over them. Nice. And you know, you learn that the hard way, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and you want to put this on after over you. Over the top. Okay. So I just took off a little bit of the excess product mm -hmm. um, and then you start from the base and you brush up. And the great thing about this brow mousse is that it won't flake. A lot mm -hmm. of them work really well, but then they can sort of gather and flake and throughout the day you start to see these little clumps and flakes and yeah. you don't want that. You want the brow to look feathered and natural, but you want it to stay in place. Ah, they're beautiful. You got the best brow. Thank you. Um, Amy is saying color brow mousse or clear? Um, I like clear mm -hmm. because I feel like if you get a good color with your pencil or your shadow, then the clear just holds them in place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to add a, a lot of thickness, then you can, but for me, this is, I, I like this, because I think this is the most natural effect. Mm -hmm. um, do. And this texture, yeah, this texture yeah. Is, is perfect. Great. All right, we're gonna move on to the eyes. Okay. So the eyes, you know, if you're doing a bold lip and a strong brow, you don't want a, a bold eye, you know, mm -hmm. unless you're going for that look in particular. You know, it can be too much. Sure. So, but we still want her eyes to pop. So I wanna go for this like goldy champagne kind of eye with nice. lashes that will be the perfect complement to the brows. Sounds great. And lip. Um, so first we're gonna start with, uh, I, I love to use um, an eye primer. I think mm -hmm. this just keeps everything and it gets rid of any discoloration. Um, this is the NARS Pro Prime. It's the smudge proof eyeshadow base, mm -hmm. um, which I think works wonders. And, and especially if you're doing like a really full on um, smoky eye. Okay. So I just put nice. a tiny bit 
And you can blend it with your finger or with mm -hmm. the brush. I'm very much a hands-on kind hands, of makeup yeah. artist. Um, I feel like sort of the heat of your hand really mm -hmm. helps makeup. Sure. Um, so this, as you can see, I'm using the medium color because Christina has such a nice warm tone to her skin. Um, and, you d and I want the lids to be warm as well. Mm -hmm. And you kind of always want to start off with like a neutral color, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the base. Yeah. But then we're going to put on, I want to put a little shimmer on the lid, which I think mm -hmm. is so pretty, like any time of year or any time of the day. So I'm obsessed with these. Oh, I love those. Little, yeah, yeah they're, they're the great. best. Mm -hmm. So these are the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize mm -hmm. Little Creams. Um, and I'm going to mix two of them because I have to mix everything <laughs> because that's just what I do. One is a little goldy champagne color, but I also, I want to add a little warmth okay. because you have such a great, you know, warm tone to your skin. So I'm going to mix the champagne color with a bit of this gold. Oh, that's so pretty. Because I don't want it to look too kind of, a you know, ashy or white. Right. But I think that's just such a nice base. That's really pretty. And you can use your fingers, mm -hmm. you can use a brush like I'm using, you can use a slot, you can really, you know, whatever you prefer. Right. Do you prefer to use your finger when you put on eyeshadow or does it depend? If I was doing my own makeup, mm -hmm. I'd do the whole thing with my fingers. Really? Probably. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, unless I was doing like a really smoky eye. Mm -hmm. But I love, I just feel like you can really blend so well and, you know. But a brush is, a brush is handy for sure. sure. So I'm going to do both eyes and I think I'm also going to layer a powder so if you want staying power for your makeup layering is definitely key mm -hmm. so you can start because you could wear this on its own and it would be great and the, the cream to powder shadows these days are amazing yeah they don't crease and they just stay put but I like to add a little bit of you know pigment and a little bit of even more staying power mm -hmm. so I'll put a a shadow over the top. Definitely. Uh, Joe is asking, is there a color you should stay away from in the fall? Um, you know, I don't believe I don't believe that there's anything you should stay away from. I mean, I know you know corals and things like that are, mm -hmm. are more summery, but I still love to wear them sometimes. Sure. You know, I mean, you do want to move into sort of more you know jewel tones mm -hmm. and deeper colors. But if you're feeling you just need a dose of summer, go for, <laughs> go it. for it. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't believe in, in too many rules. Right. I feel like there's no rules in makeup. Yeah. I mean, kind of do what's best for you. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. the thing. I mean, there are so many rules out there. Right. But I don't tend to follow them. Sure. So. <laughs> out of all the red carpet looks you've done, do you have a favorite? Oh my God. I know. That's a really <laughs> hard one. That's a really, really hard one. I don't know. It's almost, it's almost like the last one I did. Yeah. I actually did this makeup on this really gorgeous actress, Kaylee Spini. She's this new actress. She's in that movie, um, Bad Times at El Royale, okay, that you yeah. see advertised everywhere. Sure, yeah. And we did this makeup, oh, like nice. very similar. Um, mm -hmm. But she's very pale, so it was like a very, you know, champagne-y color without the gold. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was so beautiful. She has really short hair, and it just looked Stunning. amazing. Yeah. I loved it. So, all right, this. Is um, this is ma like my makeup? I don't know my favorite thing mm -hmm. ever. Nas have done this thing where they send out you know all these individual shadows, and it's kind of everything I need in mm -hmm. one little palette. Yeah. So I have these nice sort of champagne highlighter colors here in the corner, and I'm going to mix a sort of pinky and a goldy kind of shadow, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to layer that on top of the cream, like so. And as you can see, it just adds a little bit of you know, pigment and punch to the eye. Mm -hmm. And that, I feel like, will re would be really beautiful with this lip. And that's just going right over the lid. That's going right over the lid. And then it kind of works like a little highlighter as well. Mm -hmm. You know, th this will help to make the eyes look bigger. If you concentrate a sort of shimmery color right here in the middle mm -hmm. and blend kind of backward and forward, that will give you a really nice kind of open eye look. Mm -hmm. there we go. And then we're going to take sort of a taupey color, you know, like a warm kind of taupey color. Pretty. Yeah, just to give a little bit of definition. OK. And I'm just going to go in the contour 
like this. You know, nothing crazy, but you just you do want to create a little depth, and mm -hmm. this kind of widens the eyes, opens the eyes, and it'll make the eyes really, really pop. Yeah. And you just kind of go back and forward in the crease, and then down here, like in a V shape. But you, you almost want it to be invisible, and then I like to just do that with mm -hmm. my fingers, because you want to blend, and that's the best way. Blending is key. Blending is key <laughs> to all makeup looks, yeah. I think, unless you're doing a cat eye, right. in which case, you know. So I'm going to do it on the other eye as well. And then I'll probably do a little bit underneath. OK. But super soft. Just, to, just Yeah, super soft, just to open up the eye as well. And if you have, if your eyes are really far apart and you kind of want to make them a little more narrow, add mm -hmm. some definition, you can go in this area as well. Mm -hmm. But for Christina, I'm just going to emphasize pulling the eyes out. OK. I didn't know that. That's a good so tip. Pretty. And you have a lot of warmth mm -hmm. in, your, um, in your eyes. So this, these colors kind of make your eyes, you know, I don't know, brings out the warmth in brown yeah. eyes that I love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to go underneath and look up, just with a soft brush. And this this is kind of just a sh it's a shadow, and you'll barely see it, but mm -hmm. it it just opens up the eye even more. It adds a little bit more definition. And that's what the same color you did in the in crease. the crease. Okay. Yes, the same kind of taupey color. And you can sk if you have really big eyes, you can skip this. Mm -hmm. But I, I sort of feel like it finishes the eye off I do a little too. bit. I love it. Yeah. Great. So pretty. All right. So now, now we're going to do a tiny bit of gel liner. Okay. But I don't want it to be a cat eye. I want it to look like, I want it to th just to thicken the base of your lashes, mm -hmm. um, just to help with, you know, opening up the eye and giving like a really good doe eyed effect. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost going to be invisible. Okay. So I'm using a black gel liner. This is the Bobbi Brown black ink. And like, and a really stiff brush, and close. And I'm just going to wiggle in between the lashes. Mm -hmm. So this creates a nice thick base for the lashes, but you don't really see it. And you know, if you like to do a little bit of a cat eye, go for it. I mean, yeah. that, that works too, mm -hmm. especially, you, especially at night. Do you prefer gel? Um, I As this pencil. You know, for this sort of thing I do, I mean, it really stays put. Mm -hmm. But some pencils work, I mean, especially the waterproof pencils. Mm -hmm. open. Um, they work really well. And another thing is a lot of people say that they struggle with, um, you know, an eyeliner here migrating to their um, contour. Yeah. So if you get a little bit of the, the brow mousse when you're done, like a tiny bit on a Q-tip, and you just dab it over the top of your liner, mm -hmm. it won't migrate. It won't. It's oh. amazing. It's a good tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, when I learned that tip yeah. as a makeup artist, it changed, it changed my everything. life. Because <laughs> some people's eyelids, it just, it don't, no matter what you do, you can use right. waterproof, you can do anything, it always ends up up here. Uh -huh. And if you're doing like a really extreme cat eye, and then it's gonna, you're gonna keep fighting it and fighting it, and you end up with like a, con like a really deep crease. Right. But that's, um, that's a really, really great tip, and it works mm -hmm. wonders. So I'm just going to even out the eyes. And as you can see, you know, you can barely see it. And I'm really wiggling. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you've gone too far, just get a soft brush or your, f or your finger and just kind of go over it. Or even like a pointy little Q-tip mm -hmm. helps. Let's see. I'm going to pull them out ju just a little bit. Yeah, Anna is wondering if this look works with a, a heavier liner. Yes, it does, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I did a look, actually, was it last night? Or last night or the night before, and we did a really bold red lip. Mm -hmm. And then the, the actress was really kind of fiery. She was just had so much spunk, yeah. so we decided to do like a cat eye and a red lip. And it's, I mean, it's great. Right. It takes it to a different place, mm -hmm. but that's fine. I mean, you know, it depends. What I mean, it depends, you know, on your personality and how you, how you like to look. But you know, why not go apple picking? With, sure. With, <laughs> you know what I mean. Nobody's saying you can't. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. There's no rules. Mm-hmm. Close. So now I'm just going to blend this a little bit. 
But for our purposes, we're doing a, a little bit more of a classic look. And yeah, you can interpret it any, any which way. Okay, there we go. So there, you can see it a, a tiny bit. It's just framing the eye a little mm -hmm. bit, but it's not like a liner. All right, so next we're gonna work on lashes. Okay. So I have a lot of people tell me that they can't curl their lashes, they don't know how, it mm -hmm. doesn't work, they're scared, they've tried, it doesn't, you know, so there's a reason, and the reason is they're probably not using the correct curler. Tools, yeah. So mm -hmm. all eyes are created differently, you know, you have almond, you have round, you have big, you have small, so sometimes the curlers just don't work, they yeah. don't work for everyone. So mm -hmm. Tweezer Man have been genius, and they've made different shaped eyelash curlers, That's great. with different angles, even even different handles, you know, one has a the normal handle, and then this one's flat for okay. high cheekbones. Because sometimes if you have a really high cheekbone, yeah, you can't get or in a there. lot of filler, mm -hmm. you can't get in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this works beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and this these are these are for more almond or you know deep set eyes, and sure. this is for a rounder eye. Okay. So I think that this the I think that the Pro Master for sort of a more almond sure. shaped eye would work really well Great. for you. So I want you to give it a try. Okay. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, what's uh, kind of the tips and tricks for doing okay. this? As so I you want to look down. <laughs> I bet you. I bet she knows how. But I do. Actually, want... I'm not very good at oh, this. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> she just missed her whole eyelashes, so now, See, now I, I think like maybe I need to do it. I like never so. had, knew I had to like look down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, to see. All right, well, right. Op open, the, open the curler. Okay. <laughs> Show me how you do it. I do a There you bit. go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And you want to go as close to the base as possible. Yeah, and then see how she's pulsing up? That's key because if you don't pulse and you just do one curl, you're going to get a right angle. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you want. You want the, the lashes to curl up in a natural way. Right. So, yeah. Do it again? or Yes. Okay. I might, I might do it a little bit. <laughs> but you can squeeze a little harder just to make sure you get, yeah, there you go. And then like bring them up the lash a little bit. Let's see. Look at me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm gonna just do a little <laughs> tiny bit do it more. All over. <laughs> and it's totally fine. I always put my glasses on when I do these things. Does it ever like, make you nervous doing this on people? Not really. No. I mean, it used <laughs> you're to. like, I'm, used to I'm when professional. I it used to when I started. <laughs> but the key is, if you are a makeup artist and you're watching this, the key is, does that feel okay? Yep. Is to ask first. So don't just go in and squeeze. Always ask, does that feel okay? When you, you know, put a tiny bit of pressure. There you go. And look at me. Because otherwise, you could just go in there and you could really. I mean, it's right. you know, look, it's, it's, it's. Well, I'll say I should say this after I finish. But does that feel okay? Yep. It's very easy to pinch someone's <laughs> lip. Yeah. You know, it's so close. But and especially on you know, live TV, you really mm -hmm. don't want to do that. <laughs> and no. look at me. But there you go. Yeah, beautiful. The curls amazingly. Um, so that's the key. Figure out what your eye shape is, mm -hmm. and then choose the curler. Sure. And it's honestly, it's a, it's game changing mm -hmm. completely. Because I would always, you know, you miss a few on the outside, sure. or you're like, what's happening? Yeah. That it makes a huge difference. All right. So now we're going to put on some mascara. Okay. I'm going to get my trusty eyelash comb ready. So I like to Ooh. comb through between okay. applications. I'm using the new NARS Climax mascara, which has just come out. You might have seen the buses all over the place. Right, yes. um, it's pretty incredible. And I'm just going to get to the bottom of the lashes and wiggle my way up. Mm -hmm. And then how can you wiggle? So to wiggle, just to really get in the base. Yeah. And really close to the lash line. And that also, when you wiggle, it helps to separate the lashes. Mm -hmm. We go. And I also like to make sure that I like, when I apply mascara, that I pull the lashes out. Mm -hmm. That's kind of something that we never really talk about. But just so that they, you know, that they come out like this, so then they're not going straight up so that you're coming out. Got it. You know, just to give it more of a cat eye kind of look. Mm -hmm. And then you take your eyelash comb and you just run it through gently. And that just separates and that it a little separates bit more. And that separates the lashes. You get really defined, clump-free. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
clump free, and this is, I use this for any lash look. Yeah. You know, anything like that I'm doing. Um, Nicole says, I read heating your curler helps curl lashes. Do you recommend? So I had a girl do that the other day. <laughs> it definitely works. You have to be really careful though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't okay, want to finish so, your... <laughs> yeah, so if you, get a, if you want to get a hair dryer, you can heat it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It only needs to be done a little bit. And then just be, you know, put it to your eyes very kind of carefully. Okay. Because if it's too hot, you don't want to burn your lid. No. No. So I do have, um, especially a lot of clients that are Greek or Asian descent, where the mm -hmm. lashes really go down, we do tend to heat a little bit. But I sort of leave that up to them because sure. it's one of those things. And you can buy heated lash curlers, but I don't really think that they work mm -hmm. as well as heating up your own. Sure. I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay. And beautiful. I almost don't need to mm -hmm. comb with this mascara. It's so great. And I don't want to have to get that. Oh, this is, a, this is, I mean, I use this for anything. Even yeah. if I'm doing a natural look, you know, tons of lashes, mm -hmm. um, you know, brown mascara, I use that. Sure. And it's, it makes such a difference. Yeah. I hate when, you know, lashes are sort of unevenly clumped. I mean, unless you're going for like a clumpy look. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, beautiful. And then look up, we're gonna do the bottom lashes just to even out and open up her eyes a little bit. And I'm using a different mascara. I was mascara. gonna say, how can we use Yeah, this one? is the Kevin O'Quan. Mm -hmm. I just prefer the brush for the bottom lashes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. <laughs> it just Preference. <laughs> it's just preference, yeah. You've got good bottom lashes. Thank mm. you. And then for the bottom lashes, I just like to use a swirly to do. You almost don't need lashes. So, you know, if it was during the day, I probably wouldn't add lashes. Mm -hmm. um, but why not? Yes, of course. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we have to look up again. Mm -hmm. We have to showcase um, their beautiful lashes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because that could be enough. Even even that look with a nude lip mm -hmm. would be beautiful sure. on you. Your eyes yeah. really pop. Thank you. So it's just like subtle, you know, little yeah, subtleties little things. That, mm -hmm. that help. All, All right. right. So now we're going to create the lashes. Um, I always create this really lovely kind of hairy looking hand, which you'll see, <laughs> which is really attractive, but that's the way. It's the way you work. That's the way I do it. So I'm starting off with these. These are the um, Ardell Not Free Lashes. Mm -hmm. um, I really prefer individuals yeah. to strips. Okay. Um, Just they're easier. They look more natural. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't think they're even easier. I think they're. Oh, sorry. I don't okay. think they're. I think they're a little harder. But uh -huh. my hands wet. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get, once you kind of master them then they're so easy. I think they just look more natural. Sure. And I also feel like with them, you can create the shape that you want. Mm -hmm. So you sort of become your own artist in a yeah. way, which I think is really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of my clients love the way they look, but then say they're impossible to, to apply. Put, yeah. But Tweezerman have this tool called the Lash Assist, okay. which is amazing. It It's angled, it's so clever. It's angled so that you can, here, I'll show it to you. It's angled like this. Oh, so it like really gets. So right as in you there. see, you can just put it like this and drop uh -huh, them drop on. It. I mean, mm -hmm. you can, uh, you know, I have friends that like sneak sure. under their desk at work because <laughs> they're going out and they're just like quickly. You can just quickly put <gasps> yeah. them on, and it works. They work. It, it works wonders. It makes individuals so, so much, much easier. easier. Yeah. And strips. If strips are your thing, then mm -hmm. you know by all means. So do you place each one like? I never knew like how you decide to place them. So I like to do mascara first because then you can see where they okay. need to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then I put a dot of glue on the back of my hand. So as you can see, this is <laughs> really attractive, but this, this is what it takes, yep. folks. This is beauty. It's not always glamorous. Anyway, <laughs> so you grab the, the lash and then you put a, a little dot of glue, just a small dot, mm -hmm. look down. And I want to do... I want to do longer ones on the outside. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying not to hide yeah, your face. Look straight fine. ahead. And then you really want to lay them flat. And then you can twist them mm -hmm. so that they're super flat. Look straight ahead. There you go. And 
I'm doing like a cat eye effect lash, but you also want to be careful that you don't do them too far out because then they can droop and kind sure. of bring your eye down, which is not. And do you do always want to do longer ones on the outside, or does it just, or is it just preference? So it just depends what sort of shape. Like if okay. you want a rounder shape, you want to do longer ones in the middle, mm -hmm. and then shorter ones on the outside. But if you want more of a dough, like a cat eye effect, then you do longer ones Got on it. the side. But then I also like to do, look straight ahead. So pretty on you. Thank you. I also like to alternate sometimes mm -hmm. between, I'm not gonna do like a full on, full on lash. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I often say that. Right. I say that and then things happen. And, mm -hmm. and look straight ahead. Yeah, you probably could. Well, let's see, for the sake of time. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go into the shorts. Okay. And I'm just gonna place it as close to the lash line as possible. Mm -hmm. Look straight ahead. There you go. And then how close do you wanna place each one next to each other, like pretty close or? Yeah, I like them to crisscross a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, look straight ahead. That way it looks more natural. Okay. And some, you know, sometimes it's more natural to put more on than less, which I know sounds counterintuitive, but it just, they blend better, you know, if that makes sense. Right. And you always just want to make sure that they're flat, that they're laying mm -hmm. flat, because otherwise you get this crazy yeah. sort of wonky looking eyelash. Um, all right, I think one more. Yeah. And look straight ahead. There we go. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll place a couple of shorts in between the three mediums. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of blends the whole look and makes it look more natural. Crystal is asking for deep set eyes. Uh, how should I apply lashes? So for deep set eyes, it's the same, the same thing. Um, you know, it, deep set eyes actually really benefit from lashes because it mm -hmm. looks straight ahead. It really opens them up. Um, but you know, sometimes deep set eyes really need to be opened up and more round. So then I would suggest placing a couple more longer ones on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you just want to make sure that when you're looking with deep set eyes, they're not touching your your contour, you know, just below your brow bone too much because then mm -hmm. they look a little overdone. So if your eyes are really deep set, um, yeah, just keep that in mind, you know, you might have to go shorter or you might have to go longer, you know, it right. just, I know it's, it, that's not great advice, but it is mm -hmm. so personal for each eye. So just put them on and look, and if it's really touching, you know, below your brow bone, then you, you want to go a little bit shorter. Yeah. Okay, look straight ahead, and then that's, that's it, I'm going to do your other, other eye. Okay. And you know, they look so natural, I mean, they do. people, you know, would not even tell mm -hmm. that, you know, can't even tell that you're wearing them. Right. Um, but they make such a difference to they the do. eye. I feel like they really complete the look. They do. They really open up the eye. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can wear them during the day. Sure. Yeah, why not? Why not? Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll go do the other side. Always try to make sure that they match. Mm -hmm. And you want to use sort of as little glue as possible. Okay. And look straight ahead. And this is where um, that black line that you've done helps a lot because that makes them in invisible. Got it. I prefer clear glue because sometimes I think the black glue can dry a little gray. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're going for a really smoky look, look straight ahead, then black is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're putting like hardly any on. So it, a little goes a long way. Right, exactly. And, look and you know, it also depends how long you plan to wear them mm -hmm. because believe it or not, I have clients that sleep in them. Really? I have one client who shall remain nameless, of course, <laughs> who can rock these for a week. Really? Mm hmm And it's crazy. She'll come in, she's cleaned off all her makeup beautifully, uh -huh. and the lashes are still there. Wow. I think she must sleep like a vampire. Uh, yeah, like, I, was I don't know. Say. Cause Some hard work. That's, yeah. Because <laughs> I've, I've had other clients try to do it with less success. Mm hmm and you can't reuse the individuals, right? Look straight ahead. I mean, I wouldn't, Yeah. you know. I know people do, and people do reuse the strips. Right. And look at me. But, you know, I, I don't know, I wouldn't, I, but mm -hmm. it's not the worst thing in the world. Right. All right, two more. 
just in between. So there's just these just thicken up the, the outer yep. corners as well. And look at me. Beautiful. I love that. It really opens up the eye in the most natural way. And then we might put a little bit of mascara. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Diana is asking how many times can I reuse strips? So, you know, you reuse them, but you can clean them with a little bit of alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't re I, you know, I still think bacteria gets in sure. there, so I would maybe reuse them, you know, five times. I know mm -hmm. people are like, what? I've been reusing right. one for a year. I mean, as long as you're cleaning them, but still they can get a little you know, especially if, and if you're putting mascara, mascara on them, yeah. then d definitely, you know, no more than five times mm -hmm. because they can get, they can get a little funky. Dirty. <laughs> move one down. There we go. All right. So next we're going to move on to cheeks. Okay. I'll remove the rest of this hairy hand. So I'm going to use like a really, so this is the RMS, um, it's it's lip and it's lip and cheek. Okay. Um, and it's in sacred, so it's um, when you look at it, it looks really scary Ooh. in the jar. Like, yeah. oh my God, that's really <gasps> bright. But when you put it on, mm -hmm. actually, I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna put something below it, and then I'm gonna put this over the top. Okay. I'm gonna use this first. This is that's pretty. Yeah. This is a Tom Ford. It's called Scintillate. All right. So. I'm going to use a little bit of this and smile sponge and I'm just mm -hmm. going to apply it like this. So you see it gives like a really nice peachy glow mm -hmm. and I love, for, uh, for fall I love to have a That's nice funny. kind of, you know, almost like windswept yeah. kind of, you know like how you would look if you naturally went apple picking right. or you're in, you know, and it's a little bit cold and you come inside and you've mm -hmm. got that really nice fresh face I love that and then how why um, like the sponge for the cheek so this just helps to really kind of emulsify the product mm -hmm. and give you a nice you know f so for blush you kind of want it to just be there you yeah. know what I mean you don't want any lines and you don't want any you know circles so I, th I feel like the the sponge really kind of gets the blush in there mm -hmm. and it just creates a seamless application and then sometimes it still has a little bit of product on it mm -hmm. from foundation and that kind of, you know, helps to blend the edges. Yeah. But, you know, as before, if I were, if I were doing this myself, it would, would be with my fingers right. probably, you know. So, but yeah, it gives a lovely, lovely warm glow and just wakes up her whole mm -hmm. face. And then this RMS product. So I'm gonna, this I've gotta use my fingers yeah. for. <laughs> so this I do over the top, because it gives a nice dewiness, and it gives a nice sort of highlight. We, we are gonna highlight your face a little bit, mm -hmm. but I'm not like a huge highlighter, I think, okay. especially during the day, you know, when you're out walking, you know, we, we really like to highlight our faces, but you can see it in the sunshine, mm -hmm. and sometimes it can look a little overdone. Sure. Um, I like highlighting to come from hydration in the skin, healthy skin and like a, like a dewy highlight mm -hmm. rather than a glittery one. Right. I think it's so much more natural. Yeah, That's I true. love this. That is pretty. I mean, this is technically for your lip, mm -hmm. but as we said, anything can be used, you know. And I feel like this gives such a youthful kind of punchy mm -hmm. to the skin. I love that. This has become my new favorite blush. It's pretty. Okay, okay. So now we will we'll do a little bit of highlight. I'm going to use the RMS, the Master Mixer. So mm -hmm. this has got a nice gold tone to it. Um, so it's not going to look, you know, when you're dealing with nice warm skin, mm -hmm. you want to do a highlighter that has some warmth in it so it doesn't look too silver or ashy, so it looks more natural. And I love this because it does have that warmth and it's not like glittery or sure, anything yeah, like yeah, that, you not know? Too, not too much. And I'm using my fingers again. Um, and I'm just applying it on the cheekbone, up to the brow bone, and then a little bit above the brow as well. Nice. Uh, Rachel is asking for oily skin. Do cream, do cream blushes work? Yes. I have oily skin, and I still will only use a cream blush. Um, but you want to use one that's more of a cream to powder. Mm -hmm. I think it just it still adds a nice dewiness to your skin. 
without being overly oily um, and then sometimes I'll layer a pow powder over the top mm -hmm. so that's you know like if, if I was going to send you down a red carpet I would put a powder blush over the top of the cream and that way you know the same way as I layered the eye that will you know create extra staying power mm -hmm. um, and you know help you with the oil but you can still use um, just a cream by itself and okay. you know as long as it's not like a super oily cream you know, I love the Stila mm -hmm. convertible color and the RMS are nice because they don't create that oily finish. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, some of them do really dry to powder so you can get that kind of seamless um, cream blush look and then it's in powder form so, you know, you have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of this highlighter um, just on the inner corner of the eye, look up. So in this little V and then this adds an extra kind of sparkle to the eye mm -hmm. you know it, it makes the eyes appear a little wider you know it creates makes the whites look a little wider and close and then sometimes I'll just put a little over the top of the lid as well mm -hmm. for an extra bit of shine just in the middle right? just yeah just in the middle and then blend it because that especially when it catches the light mm -hmm. looks really beautiful and yeah. really opens up the eyes nice Okay, so now we're going to move on to the lip. Okay. So when you're doing a deep lip, you really want to prep the lip. So mm -hmm. you can't have, you know, you don't want to have a dry lip. You want your lips to be nice and, and sort of smooth, mm -hmm. not flaky. So I'm going to put on a bit of lip balm. And then one thing that I love to do, you know, there are lip scrubs. Um, there's this really great simple wipe that's the exfoliating wipe okay and this works so well to exfoliate oh, nice, lips it's really? amazing better than any lip scrub that I've used oh, wow. so I always prep the lips and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it to you okay because she can obviously press harder than I can mm -hmm. just to get rid of any of the dead skin mm -hmm. and this is the it's this tis the season for dry lips oh, now my God, I, I, I get such bad dry lips too yeah, well that's you know unfortunately mm -hmm. that's well, what's that happening really does work doesn't well. that work well yeah. it's, it's amazing better than you know any lip scrub uh-huh I know it's I'm not really sure why but it just that's does. great yeah <laughs> okay thank you so now Oh yeah, that made I know, such, such a, a difference. difference. <laughs> it really did. So I'm going to use this NARS pen. It's called Pretty. Endangered Red, mm -hmm. um, but it's more of a berry, um, and it's a it's a velvet matte lip pencil. And I'm going to just feather it all over. And you know, I like lip liner sometimes. I don't think it's always necessary. Um, Christina has really well defined lips, so this is kind of works as, as both, mm -hmm. um, a lip liner and a lipstick. I'll layer a product over it. I do have a lip liner as well if we feel like we need to create more shape. Um, but, I, you know, for me, I don't really love a, a lip that looks overly painted and so perfect, yeah. especially when you're dealing with this sort of color. I feel like it looks kind of looks nicer when it's a little, like, not smudged, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like the edges are a little blurred. Yeah. So. Sometimes I'll use lip liner just in certain places. But this kind of doubles as both. And then when you're doing a deep lip as well, you don't want to always have to worry about like pretty. touching it up, touching it up. Right. So when you layer products again, um, then you get more staying powder. Like these, these velvet matte pencils really stay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just use the lip liner, the, um, sorry, the lip brush to just get this like nice, Shape. It's nice mm -hmm. shape and nice kind of edge without it looking too perfect. Sometimes I even go over the edges with my finger to oh, really? make it look a little, you know, like you've just eaten. Yeah, like a little messy. You just had a glass of wine or just mm -hmm. had like, I don't know, a grape sure, or something yeah, like yeah. that, you know, because I, I just think it's m more beautiful and more, I don't know, I don't want to say seductive, but you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like it just has a, it just has a, a better Good. kind of look. Right. It's like perfectly sure. applied. Um, I don't even think we're going to need a lip liner. All right, that's beautiful. And then you can rub your lips together. All right, so I'm going to put a lipstick over the top. Okay. I love that this color. lipstick, 
I just, oh, wow. you have to have a look. Oh, wow. If you guys can see this. Nas just the sent shape these, of that. the shape of these. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. They're so beautiful. They are. And this one is called Susie, I believe. I think it's after Susie and the Banshees. Mm hmm So, because I have not, you're the first person I've used this Ooh, on. Nice. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to just apply it from the tube. And you can, you know, if it's your own lip lipstick, apply it from the tube. And sometimes if lips are a little dry, I'll press mm -hmm. instead of, you know, just so that it doesn't grab as much. Okay. And then I'll use a lip brush and go in after the top. Yeah, this is such a beautiful full look. I love this. And you could do this with a red, you could mm -hmm. do this with, you know, a burgundy, you could do it, you know, whatever you, whatever suits you sure. and whatever sort of interpretation. But this kind of berry plum I love for fall and you know the other thing is if you're if your brows are really well groomed I mean, if you're one of those like two minute makeup people mm -hmm. which that's me yeah um, if your brows are groomed and done then you can just throw on a lip and you can and run out the go. door and you're good mm -hmm. to go yeah that's so that's what I love I you know especially on the weekend I and mean, who wants to spend that's hours right. doing, doing their makeup, makeup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that beautiful all right, so all my last. Let's see if we need to put any more. <laughs> I think I think we're probably done. Yeah, let's I see. I love this. Anything else? I'm just going to add a touch of this just to okay. make sure it it lasts. Yeah, it's the perfect complement. Yeah. I also like how this is a little warm with mm -hmm. the blue in the in the lipstick. It just keep, creates like a really warm finish to your face and there we go there we go oh. what do you guys think it's a perfect fall look i love it i love it, it looks too. great thank I you so much you're so welcome oh, it was thank so you, fun Gita, yeah, so much fun and thank you for all your helpful tips and i think this is a perfect look for fall for everybody absolutely definitely yep. thank you you're so welcome thanks, thanks. everybody